Now, obviously, uh, I mentioned your book at the beginning, which you um, uh, co-authored with Lorraine Finlay and uh, Joshua Foster, uh, no offence intended by 18C is wrong. The, uh, the main focus of that uh, book is talking about how 18C might not be uh, co uh, constitutional and it also uh, touches upon the philosophical arguments uh, against it. Um, why did you feel that this was um, a, a good uh, topic to explore in a book? Well, because our politicians mainly have seem to have no knowledge of our constitution. I must say that the Attorney General, for instance, should be uh, 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 approaching this issue from a constitutional law perspective. He is the Attorney General. He should know the law. First of all, he, the only thing he says is that we have the right to be bigots. That's not a very good approach because I can't say that this law has nothing to do with that. So his lack of knowledge of the law is a major problem. Because of course the law is, a, is unconstitutional because it's about people feeling offended by people, others expressing their opinions, you know. And the opinion can be a very reasonable one, but if the other person feels offended, then he can use this as an instrument of punishment, of persecution against those who dare to express a different opinion. Uh, look, I don't see the passion. I mean, uh, you can even have a very mild reform that was not good at all, to be frank with you. Uh, what about keeping of offendedness and, and uh, insult? We should get rid of this whole lot. I think the only way to go is to repeal this session, section and to establish stronger, uh, a stronger or more powerful threshold that would be saying that, you know, if you threaten someone or if you really, you know, incite people to commit acts of violence, that these things should be uh, punished. Not about people having an opinion. Even because the courts are not going to decide methods of truth, it has never been so. And certainly, like when you have all these litigation processes going on, even those who are the real, real intolerant people, one, they can use the law to punish innocent people. And the other, even if the law is used against them, they can claim then that they are martyrs. And the Nazis did that. That they were persecuted by the law before they got into power. And that was, according to Dan, another reason as to why they could confirm that the Jewish somehow people were involved in this whole process of persecuting them. So that can reinforce the paranoia. That can reinforce their uh, racist or bigoted positions just by saying that the, the persecution is another confirmation that they are really the victims. So you're certainly in favour of a full repeal of the 18C, no reform of it? Well, if the, do you know what? If the politicians who are our employees have the right to have their free speech, we are the sovereign people. And in a democracy, we need to have free speech. Look, these people think more like totalitarians, you know. This is a crime of conscience. That's what used to happen in the Soviet Union. So what is that that you are bringing about communist ideology to this country? This whole thing about preventing people from... Do you really think the government can, can be trusted to tell me what I have to say? It's a dangerous idea. So it can go further and further. And one day we cannot say anything uh, unless the elite allows you to do so. So, of course, the elite wants to control speech because they want to control power, but we need to rebel. I think what you need is a classical liber liberation, a classical liberal revolution in this country. Uh, maybe one day we'll, we'll get there soon. <laughs>